Hey Canucks fans, TSN released its all-time Vancouver Canucks team this morning. And I must say, I can't argue with any of their choices. I'm Clay Emo, I'm at Canuck Clay on Twitter. I'm at Clay Emo on Instagram. I'm the founder of the GLCPC, the Good Looking Canucks Positivity Club. And that's my Canucks take on one take. It's Clay's Canucks commentary for Monday, May the 11th. This is where you get Canucks insight that's positive and timely. Thanks to everyone who joined me for my live stream last night. A lot of fun. Jacob came down and started off and it went from there. And it's a wonderful chance to check in with each of you. Gonna do it again on Wednesday night. So I hope you make plans to join me then. All right, TSN has been doing this uh, all-time teams for all seven Canadian rosters. And Canucks went last, actually. They didn't even go in alphabetical order because then Vancouver would have gone ahead of Winnipeg. But for whatever reason, they saved the best for last, so to speak. Well, I don't know about that. But they saved Vancouver for last. And finally, they released it this morning, two and a half weeks after, three weeks after this whole project started. And they had some criteria for naming players, and I'll, I'll go through some of the important criteria right now. You had to pay, play at least 250, uh, two, 225 games with the team. So that basically means uh, three full seasons. So you had to play 225 games at least with the Vancouver Canucks. Uh, of course, they named a standard roster of two goalies, 6D and 12 uh, forwards. And then they have a foundational player, and then they had also a just missed the cut team, which I'll get to at the very end. And they basically um, had to they try to slot people in their proper positions, especially up front, center, uh, in the left wing and right wing. Uh, you'll see with, with Burroughs, they kind of made an exception, but I'll get to that in a second. Actually, I'll get to it right now. The Alex Burroughs on the team as a left winger because he did start his career with the Canucks on the left wing. So they, they made exceptions when they had to, but they tried not to. So they basically tried to slot people in their proper position where they played when they were with the Vancouver Canucks. Same with deep. They didn't necessarily take the top three, you know, uh, the, the top six scoring D-men, they looked at making pairs, like pairs that would work together, left shot, right shot, and then uh, for both the forwards and the D, instead of taking the top 12 scorers and on forward, up front, and the top six D-men scorers, they actually made sure they had at least one checking line up front and one shutdown pair um, on the back end. But for the for this group, it doesn't really affect them that much because it just so happens that some of their, their checking forwards or their shutdown D are actually some of their highest scoring uh, point getters, point uh, you know, um, point accumulators throughout their career. But yeah, so just be aware that there's one checking line up front and there's one shutdown pair on D. And that's really it. Um, and and really, uh, remember when it comes to D pairings, they didn't go with just the high scoring D men on each side. They actually put uh, try to think of pairs that would work together. So without further ado, their team and you may have seen this already. Uh, at, in net, no surprise, Roberto Luongo. And Kirk McLean. I think this is the most cut and dry. We don't even have to talk about them because um, that's, yeah, those are the two best goaltenders in Canucks history. Kirk McLean in the Ring of Honor, Roberto Luongo either Ring of Honor or Jersey Retirement. I know a lot of people are debating that um, even to this day. Up front, I'll go through the lines quickly and then we'll talk about them. You have the Sedins with Pavel Bure, then you have Marcus Naslin with Trevor Linden and Todd Bertuzzi. And then our third line of Jeff Courtnell, Thomas Gurdin, and Tony Tanti. And then our checking line, our fourth line of Alex Burroughs on the left, which I talked about, Ryan Kessler in the middle, and then Stan Smeal on the right. So let's talk about these lines really quickly. I don't think anyone would argue about the first line. Can you imagine the Sedins, the most brilliant players we've ever had, the most durable, the most, uh, you could say, the most talented um, uh, as a complete package. Can you imagine and how just how smart they are? Can you imagine them playing with the most exciting player, the fastest player we've ever had. I can just picture, you know, Daniel to Henrik at our blue line and then Henrik sending a lead pass to Bure and then Bure getting behind the D for, for a great chance, you know, a great chance, a breakaway chance. Or maybe they're cycling the puck and while the, Henrik and Daniel are cycling to each other in the corner or on the side, you have Pavel just whipping around the, uh, around the offensive zone looking for an opening. So uh, Pavel with a wicked shot as well, Sedins with their, their brilliance, their seedinary, so to speak. The Bure um, with the Sedins, I think a no-brainer. There are three best players um, in franchise history all together on the top line. It would be amazing. Then our second line, also very good. It's basically two-thirds of the West Coast Express. You have Todd Bertuzzi and you have Marcus Naslin on the wings. And we know how good Marcus was, especially as a leader and, and a, a, a 
amazing wrist shot, amazing offensive player. Todd Bertuzzi, the consummate power forward, maybe the best power forward that we've had in our, in our club's history. But you don't have Brendan Morrison in the middle because you know he simply doesn't make the cut of the top four centers. You have Trevor Linden, our, our franchise player, our, our, our foundational player for so many years. Linden played both center and right wing for the Canucks, but he did a lot of damage at center. Um, great player, good size, good speed, really good hands, all those things, are very intelligent. Um, so you have Trevor Linden, Taking Brendan Morrison's spot on the West Coast Express, Linden between Naslin and Bertuzzi. I love the looks of that line as well. A really strong second line to, to fall in behind the Sedins and Bure. Third line, some nice variety here. You have Thomas Gerdine, a very skilled Swedish player in the middle. You see a trend here. And then, oh, by the way, obviously Pedersen and Hughes did not make this team because they have not played 225 games each. Pedersen's only played two seasons. Hughes has played only one season, but if we did this two or three years down the road, you know that they'd be on this team for sure. So anyways, speaking of Swedish centermen, Thomas Grudin in the middle, and then he's flanked by Jeff Cortnall and Tony Tanti. So a lot of speed, a lot of quickness on this line. They're not the biggest guys. Jeff Cortnall though, he played pretty tough despite his small size. Great skater and a wicked shot, if you guys remember him. And then on the other side, Tony Tanti, multiple 40 point, 40 goal seasons for the Vancouver Canucks. A sniper in every sense of the word. So I like the offense that that third line gives. They're not going to be the biggest line. They might get, you know, knocked off the puck a little bit, but I still like the skill and the offense on that third line of Gerdine, Courtneau, and Tanti. And then our fourth line, you have Kessler and Burles together. We know the magic that they can bring, not just on the penalty kill, but when they, they played together before they moved Burles up to the top line with the Steens, but Kessler and Burles, and then Stan Smeal, the steamer. When a lot of people think of the old school Canucks and the flying V, they think of Stan Smeal first. So that line would be um, a handful to play against. You know they'd be yapping at you all game. And they, you know, there's some offensive uh, skill there. You have the ruggedness and the determination of Stan Smeal, then the skill of Ryan Kessler and the great skating, and Alex Burrells, you know, we know how good he is, how he thrived in the underdog role. So I really like that fourth line, actually. I like it a lot. Um, so overall, the four lines I do, I, I do like, you know, a couple um, noticeable absences. Actually, we'll get to the absences at the end. So those are the four forward lines. The Sedins with Bure, Linden between Naslin and Bertuzzi. Then you have Gradeen between um, Jeff Cortno and Tony Tanti, and then our fourth line of Kessler, Burles, and Smeal. So let's move to the D now. Top D pairing, you have Matthias Olin, who I would argue is the biggest on the left side, the, our best defender in history, him and Edler, but I think it's Matthias Olin still. I love Olin's game. And Doug Lister, Doug Lister on the right. People forget about Doug Lister. He was a solid, solid player for us for many seasons. And I think I, I read a stat when they were talking about it. Yeah, that on, on the D, that Olin and, and Lister both had 300 points for the Canucks and each were four-time winners of best defenseman of the year for Vancouver. So you have uh, Olin and Lister. I think a lot of the newer fans don't know a lot about Doug Lister. Look him up. He was good. He was solid. Our, our best D-man when he was here. Then a second, I, I, I like the second pairing of Yurke Lumi on the left, Sammy Saddle on the right. Yurke Lumi, I've always talked about this. Uh, it's amazing how he skates. And when he skates, he's basically upright. He skates like this and he just kind of moves his legs and he's kind of upright as he goes. That was probably the worst demonstration ever. But you have Lume on the left and you have the booming shot of Sammy Salo on the right, both, um, you know, I, I think that's a really nice combo, actually, and you have you know, the fleet, Lume, who can probably get the puck out of our zone a lot better, and Salisbury stay at home. And then, by the way, what I didn't really give enough credit to Olin, Olin was a complete package, a great skater, tough as nails, he could put guys on, the, on, their, on their butt on the ice, and uh, good offensive ability as well. And then our third pairing, Alex Edler and Kevin Bieksa. Yes, this is a, a cool pairing, a 2011 pairing, or at least they're on the same team. At, at, um, you know, they're on the team together at the time. And Edler, we know what we have. He's the all-time leader in games, goals, assists, and points. So he's an all-time defense leader in all those categories, all those offensive categories. And then Kevin Bieksa, uh, good, actually underrated skater, under, uh, really good hockey IQ. And they'd be a great shutdown tandem. So again, you have Olin with Litster, you have Lume with Salo, and you have Edler with Bieksa. And then the guys that they, they named as a foundational player, so they have one player who meant a lot to the franchise who wasn't maybe the most skilled. TSN named Orlin Kurtbach, who was our very first captain. We remember him when he had, did that handoff with the Sedins to Bo Horvat at the start of this season. And he was, um, you know, like I said, our first captain and he wore it for four years. And then um, he was also the first Canuck inducted to the Ring of Honor. So that's cool for a foundational player. Head coach Alain Vigneault, no uh, qualms there because of the success that he uh, led the Canucks to, including one game from the Stanley Cup. And then GM, TSN actually kind of did a cop-out. They named two. 
They named Pat Quinn. Everyone loved the big Irishman making, you know, drafting Pavel Bure when no one else thought that it could, then taking the Canucks to the 1994 Stanley Cup Finals. And he shares the co-GM with Mike Gillis. Mike Gillis, um, you know, obviously, uh, I, I talked about this in a couple of vlogs ago, how, how uh, actually it was in my Ask Me Anything yesterday, how Mike Gillis thought outside the box, did everything he could to make the, uh, give the Canucks a competitive advantage. And of course, they were one game short of winning the Stanley Cup. He was also named GM of the year that, in that 2010-2011 season. You know, would you consider Brian Burke for the way that he orchestrated the Sedins trade? Maybe, but no, I can't really argue with Quinn and Gillis. Would have liked them to pick one or the other. I would, I would probably pick Gillis, although Quinn was more popular, but um, I'm not gonna argue with, so much with that. And lastly, they basically named one player at each position for the last cuts guys who didn't make the team. So Richard Brodeur was the third goaltender and makes sense Brodeur backstopped the Canucks to the 82 uh, Stanley Cup Finals, McLean was 94 and Long was 2011. So you have the three Stanley Cup goaltenders as the three. So Richard Brodeur was the, the first cut at goal. Andy Jovanovski and Kevin McCarthy. Not a lot of people know about Kevin McCarthy because he was 1978 to 1984. So I'm sure most of my viewers weren't even born then. Um, but you have to trust me on that one. He was good. He, he was a great player, solid player. And then Jovo, um, you know, high risk, high reward. He's the quintessential high risk, high reward guy. Great offensive player. And then on, on up front, you have Greg Adams. Really a lot of big playoff goals, a lot of clutch goals. In the center, you have Cliff Ronning, who was actually um, a 0 .90 points per game, but uh, I'm not sure you can put Ronning ahead of any of the four centers we talked about. And then on the right side, Alexander McGillney only played a few seasons for the Canucks, but had a 55 goal season and was also a point per game player. So uh, the right side was stacked though with with obviously Bure, Bertuzzi, Tanti, and Smeal, but uh, you could argue for Alex McGillney, and he's actually leading the poll on TSN.ca as who was the biggest omission from the from the all time team. So there we go, Canucks fans. There's the 18 skaters, 18 players, skaters, two goalies, plus one foundational player, a roster of 21, plus the six guys that didn't make it, plus a head coach and co-GMs. Question of the day is, um, do you like this roster? Um, and what were the biggest omissions for you? What, yeah, which players would you have liked to see on your all-time Vancouver Canucks team? Leave a comment below. I love to read, react, and reply as always. Subscribe if you like to. Like this video if you like to. Stay safe, stay healthy, take care of yourselves, take care of each other, and have a great day. God bless, and go Canucks go.